Google Workspace, formerly known as G Suite, is a powerful all-in-one business communication and collaboration platform for teams wanting to essentially set up their business emails, but also have access to all the powerful tools and apps Google has to offer. Hey team, welcome back to another small business tutorial and thanks for joining us if it's your first time visiting this channel. Now today, I'm excited to guide you through a Google Workspace tutorial for beginners and help you get started and make the most of Google Workspace in 2021. Now guys, just quickly, before we launch into Google Workspace, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to grow your small business online in 2021. And with that quick note out the way, let's waste no more time and let's get you started with Google Workspace. <music> Okay, so here we are at Google Workspace, formerly known as G Suite, and this is where you can get started with Google Workspace. So simply head over to workspace.google.com and you'll arrive on Google Workspace. Now, before we dive into Google Workspace and show you how to set up and get started with your Google Workspace account, Firstly, what we're going to do is cover what's included within Google Workspace and the pricing options to get you started. Now, the great thing about Google Workspace as an email provider for your small business, as well as an all-in-one communication and collaboration platform, is Google Workspace allows you to get started for free with their free trial of 14 days. And this allows you to get the hang of Google Workspace to see if it works for you and your team. Now, just quickly, and as you can see up here, G Suite just got better introducing Google Workspace. Now I mentioned this at the beginning of this tutorial, G Suite has gone through a transformation and rebranding into Google Workspace. This is Google's recent big change to a more simple, manageable and easy to use collaboration focused platform. Now, if you just want to learn some of the differences between G Suite and Google Workspace, then feel free to watch the tutorial up above, which will guide you through the changes. However, stick around if you want a complete guide to getting started with Google Workspace. All right, now with all that covered, let's dive right into Google Workspace. So firstly, if we navigate up to what's included, here you can see all the Google apps and tools that are included within Google Workspace. Now, this is the same with G Suite. However, what you'll notice is the color scheme change. So this is all part of Google's rebranding and transformation into Google Workspace. And all these applications allow you to communicate and collaborate with your team members within Google Workspace. And the big focus for Google and their apps is to enhance communication and collaboration. Then if we navigate over to pricing, here you can see the pricing plans for Google Workspace. Now, as you can see, we've got the business starter and business standard. For small businesses, these are the two that you want to look at. Now, the biggest difference between business starter and business standard is the 150 participant video meetings through Google Meet versus 100 participants video meetings within the business starter. So essentially you can have larger meetings within Google Meet with the business standard. And then you'll also notice two terabytes of cloud storage per user under the business standard plan versus the business starter, which only allows 30 gigabytes of cloud storage per user. So essentially, if your users within your small business require lots of storage, then you'd go for the business standard over the business starter. However, if the 30 gigabyte limit is not an issue within your business, then you'd go for the business starter. And then as you can see, the business plus just allows for 250 participants and up to five terabytes of cloud storage per user. So ideally for a small business, you would go for the business starter or the business standard, and this all depends on the storage limits, requirements in your business. So what we're gonna do now is navigate up to start free trial. And here is where we can get started with the free 14 day trial to see if Google Workspace works for our small business. If it doesn't, we can cancel within those 14 days and we will not be charged. So firstly, what we wanna do is add our business name. So for us, we are just gonna add Stuart Consulting. And then come down and select the number of employees, including yourself. We're just gonna go two to nine. And then come down and select your country and then click next. 
and here all you need to do is add your personal contact information. Now because you're signing up to Google Workspace on behalf of your organization, you're going to become the account admin for Google Workspace. However, down the track when you add other users to Google Workspace, you can shift this account admin responsibility to another user. However, like I said, because you're signing up on behalf of your organization, what you want to do is add your personal contact information. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Once you've added your information, come down and click next. Now here you need to identify if your business already has a domain name. Now this is your website URL for your business. So for example, for us, it could be stuartgould.com. Com. That will be our website URL and for the purpose of this tutorial we're going to use stuartgold.com as our domain name and because we've already purchased this domain name we're going to select I have a domain. However if you don't already have a domain name then you can come down here and click I'd like to buy a domain and that's going to take you to Google domains and you can purchase a domain through Google domains. Now I recommend you do this if you don't already have a domain name. It's very cheap to register a domain for one year. It's about $20 to $30 per year depending on the register you purchase your domain from. However, I recommend going ahead and using Google Domains. Then if you'd like to get started quickly and you don't have a domain or you don't want to buy a domain just yet, then you can get started quickly by selecting I'd like a free dot page domain. And if you decided to go for a free domain, then your domain would look like this, your company dot page, rather than for example us, stuartgold.com it would be stuartgold.page for a free domain and that lasts for one year. If you decide to go for this option you can upgrade to a paid domain later down the track. So for now what we're going to do is select I have a domain because remember we've already purchased a domain. If you don't already have a business domain remember this is like your website URL then go ahead and click I'd like to buy a domain. So for us I have a domain then once you've selected I'd like to buy a domain or I have a domain, come down and click next. And because we already have a domain name, I'm going to add that in here and then come down and click next. Here you'll be asked if you want to use your domain that you've just entered to set up your account. Yes, we do. We're going to go ahead and click next. Here you have the option to receive occasional emails with tips, offers and announcements from Google. Again, if you're just getting started, I recommend clicking yes because you do get helpful material from Google. However, for us, we're just going to go ahead and click no thanks. Okay, so here we are on a very important step when setting up our Google Workspace account. This is where we can go ahead and actually create our first business email address. Now within Google Workspace you can create multiple business email addresses. This is just for you. This is the first one we want to create before we go ahead and create other business emails for other team members, other users within Google Workspace. Now your username can be anything you like. So for example this is our domain over here stuartgold.com and then we have the at symbol here. So what do you want over here? For example I could go info at stuartgold.com, sales at stuartgold.com, help at stuartgold.com, contact at stuartgold.com, or I could even just add my name. So for the purpose of this tutorial, this is going to be my account. So I'm just going to add my name, Stuart at stuartgold.com. Now you can also go ahead and create email aliases. So rather than creating multiple business email addresses, especially if you have a very small team, maybe there's just one, two or three individuals within your small business, then you can create an email alias. So this could be contact at stuartgold.com or info at stuartgold.com and you could send people to this or your business email address from those two aliases. So there's a big difference between creating a business email address, what we're doing right now, compared to actually creating an email alias for each business email address. If you want more information about creating an email alias within Google Workspace, what I'll do is link a tutorial up above which will guide you through the process to creating an email alias and being able to even send through that email alias. Okay, so once you've added your first username, come down and add a password. This is going to be for your account. And then come down and select I'm not a robot and navigate down to agree and continue. 
And congratulations, just like that, you've created your first Google account within Google Workspace. Now what we want to do is actually go ahead and set up our account. So click go to set up. And here we are on our admin console, our Google admin. And this is where you can manage and control all the different accounts that you create within your Google Workspace. So what we want to do is come down and click next. And firstly, what we need to do is verify our domain name to show that we own this domain that we've used for our Google Workspace. So navigate over to Verify. And here is where you have two methods to verify your domain name. So we're going to go ahead and use text verification and then come down and click continue. Okay, so verifying that you own this domain name that you're using for Google Workspace is a very straightforward process. Anyone can do this. Just follow the step-by-step -step process that I'm going to guide you through now with Google Domains. So again, I highly recommend you purchase your domain name through Google Domains if you haven't already created a domain name. So for us, our domain name has been purchased through Google Domains. However, if you do struggle to verify your domain, you can also get in contact with your domain provider or your hosting provider, and they can guide you through this process process. So you do have support through your domain provider if you've already purchased a domain through another website. Okay, so firstly what we need to do to verify that we own stuartgool.com which is the domain that we're using for Google Workspace is we need to copy this txt record by clicking copy and then what I want to do now is head over to my Google Domains dashboard. And here under Google Domains what I want to do is navigate over DNS and here you can see custom resource records. What I want to do here is have the at sign. So you can see the at sign here. Then navigate over to this A and then come down and select TXT. Then navigate over to text. And here you want to paste in that code that we just copied from the Google Workspace interface. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here and then navigate over to add. And as you can see, this might take time to come into effect. So what I'm going to do is head over back to my Google Workspace admin. And just like that, we have completed the TXT record verification process. Now what we need to do is navigate down to the bottom and click verify my domain. Now this verification process does take time, so you do need to be patient. Now you can also close this page and return later if you like. So what I'm going to do is navigate up to verify your domain and click exit. Now, following the verification of your domain name, you can go ahead and create new users. Now, this again is a very straightforward process. All you need to do is add the new users that you want to add to your team, give them a username and create their password. Then you can send that information to your new users and they will be able to access their own Gmail and other Google apps. It's a very straightforward process, just like I've showed you in this tutorial when creating your own Gmail, your own business email account. Then after that, all you need to do is activate your Gmail for your domain name. And again, this is a very straightforward process that Google Workspace guides you through. Now, currently we are in Google Admin. So remember, you are the admin. You can give this admin responsibility to another user once you've added them to Google Workspace. Now to get to Google Admin, all you need to do is type in admin.google.com or under your new business email, so your Gmail inbox, you can actually navigate over to Google Apps on the right hand side and then navigate through all the different apps here and you can also access Google Admin. So click on Admin and that's going to take you to your Google admin if you are the admin for Google Workspace. Now like I said this is where you can access all your Google Apps if you like just within your Gmail account. Now if we head back to our admin account and back here in our Google admin we can also navigate up to Google Apps and then we can head over to our Gmail account here. And this is what your Google admin will look like once you've verified your domain for Google Workspace. Now again you have options over here which we're not going to dive into today as this is just a beginner's tutorial. But what you can do is actually navigate over to users here and this is where you can manage all your different users within your team. So for example we have three users here. I can go ahead and add a new user if I like and add their details here. And basically, if you decide you don't want to add any new users to your team right now within Google Workspace, then that's completely fine. You can always add new users 
down the track by simply heading over to Google Admin and clicking on users and adding new users here. So it's a very straightforward process to actually set up and get started with Google Workspace in 2021 and add new users, add yourself and start streamlining the communication and collaboration within your small business, ultimately to drive performance and productivity within your business. Google Workspace is a great platform for you to enhance your business online. And that is it guys for today's Google Workspace tutorial for beginners. Now, if you have any questions about this tutorial, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.